Welcome to Global Village. We are airing today from the Brooks Legion, where we're honored to have uh, Scott Berry. He's the uh, new executive uh, director of SPEC, and Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim, who is the Somali Elder Council. He's uh, one of the leaders also of the African Canadian Elders Council. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Yeah, Scott, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm fairly new to Brooks. I've uh, arrived here within the last six weeks. I was uh, hired to, uh, by SPEC to come on as the executive director. I am born and raised in Alberta. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from the Calgary region. Uh, my background has been involved in as an entrepreneur. I've built a number of businesses uh, in the communications world and have been very much involved in the nonprofit world working with youth organizations uh, for much of my career and I moved that into the main part of my career within the last uh, four years. Uh, that includes leadership, uh, youth leadership uh, mm. type programs, yeah. uh, heavily involved with Scouts uh, organization as well. Wow, that's that. So you came from a uh, big city or a small city? Uh, well, I was born in Calgary and, uh, and raised there, but uh, came from a small town just outside of Calgary called Bragg Creek. Where, uh, I've been living for the last uh, number of years. Oh, okay. Uh, much smaller than Brooks. Oh, much smaller than Brooks. <laughs> oh, that's at least then Brooks is bigger than that. It was town. like moving to the big city. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome to Brooks again. Thank you. I think uh, it's a great community as you saw that. And we hope to have you, and we are very honored to have you. Yes, Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. <clears throat> as I am, my name is Mohammed Ibrahim. I now live in Brooks for the third year. I came to Brooks in January 2015. Uh, I was born in Somalia, and then when I was eight years old, after the civil war broke out in Somalia, my family and I moved to Kenya, where we lived in Rivijigam for over 20 years. And I had my, all my schools, my education background in Kenya, where I established myself. I had been working with the international NGOs, for humanitarian assistances there for over eight years. And then before I was sponsored to come to Canada by a friend living in Winnipeg, where I had to stay for one year and six months. I came with my family here. I have nine kids, very beautiful, and they all go to Eastbrook School, Eastbrook Elementary School. And currently I'm doing um, a diploma program in business management at Cypress College in Medicine Hut. I also work with uh, JBS as a military apprentice. Um, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Now that's that's good. so. Did you say nine kids? Yeah, yeah. I've got. I'm that's married, that's, it, that's um, whole community. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's one big community for myself. There you there. go. There you go. Okay. Yeah, Scott, you wanna touch base with a uh, uh, little bit about spec. Sure. Uh, so SPEC is uh, one of the larger uh, community serving organizations uh, within Brooks. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, three areas uh, that uh, are divisions. Uh, we have our family support area, which uh, gets involved with uh, early long term intervention and other family support type services. Yeah. Uh, we have our LINK program. Our LINK uh, works. Uh, uh, most significantly with the immigrant community, as, but as well as the general community at large, okay. and uh, is very much focused on uh, supporting uh, individuals and families to uh, not only to integrate within the community, but to thrive within the community. And then we have a parent link program, sometimes called the PLC mm -hmm. uh, program, and that is very much involved in uh, uh, a younger demographic, or sort of zero to six mm -hmm. uh, demographic, as well as the families and mothers of, of those children. Wow, that's that's so. So the, that's three different uh, departments that you have within SPEC. That's right. That's within SPEC itself, and each one of those has their own individual programs. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have been Mohammed. Thank you, uh, Scott. You have been in Brooks for uh, three and a half years. No, I, I, had, I came to Canada in oh. 2013, October 2013. And you then came to the, Brooks then 2014? I came to Brooks in January 2015, where I was hired by JBS. I typically lived in Winnipeg for one year and four months. Okay, so you lived yeah. in Brooks since 2015 then? Yeah, I lived here in Brooks since 2015. Yeah. This is my third year. So what's your impression of the community in, in, in general so far? 
And uh, sorry to say that and I had, uh, when I came to Canada, my impression was that I will get uh, the jobs I used to do back in Kenya in the camps and uh, like uh, an office job. But uh, I ended up uh, staying there for one year and four months without no job. And then uh, when I came to, I called a friend who is still here in Brooks. And then uh, I immediately got a job with JBS. The community welcomed me, kind of like uh, the new Canada that I found other than the one in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had a job yeah. helping communities, yeah. communities that uh, opened up my eyes. The first person I met was uh, Bamida from uh, JB and Spec yeah. and uh, Nasra. Then uh, I had to register my family with them. And then the, they actually exposed me to the college that way I am learn, learning. She, they gave me the links because I told them, this is my background. What do I do? Because I stayed in Winnipeg for one year and four months. And then I could not get anywhere out of my box. Mm -hmm. So they tell me we have uh, Academy of Learning mm -hmm. and Cypress College here and Medicine Heart mm -hmm. College. And then I went to three of them. And then I ended up being with Cypress College because they have uh, government funding and grants and student loans too, unlike the other two institutions. So I, I can say the Brooks here in, in the, the Brooks communities are uh, dedicated, hardworking, willing to support and accommodating too. Yeah, so that, that is the kind of services you guys provide to in general uh, not in general population, but the uh, immigrant population. Yeah, correct. So we, we, we provide the opportunity to uh, find a way to, to, to land in a community and feel like you are part of that community. It's beyond uh, some of the, the more, say, formal type of services where it might be filling out forms or, uh, you know, getting, yeah. you know, registered in the schools, but actually integrating into the culture is, yeah. is, is critical. In fact, really? if we look at uh, and the research shows this. We look at what really supports uh, people feeling like uh, they've landed and, and are part of something is when they feel they're part of a community that they can support and that that community supports them. And so that is a big part of our mandate is to assist individuals to feel like they're part of something bigger. Uh, when people are happy, uh, they're happy when they're part of a community, they thrive and so do their families thrive. So when we look at uh, how can we support anybody moving here, whether it is from, say, Africa or from Asia or South America or from Bread Creek, yeah. uh, like myself? Uh, yeah. uh, how, do I, how do I fit into this community? How do I meet people? How do I find people of common interest? Uh, that's what's going to keep myself and everybody else here and really create that ownership within the community. This is what the most important thing. When we feel this is our community, yeah. that we're not just visiting, but that we own it, mm -hmm. then we're gonna to contribute to it and we're gonna make it better. And uh, we're going to find a way to work together with everybody that's already here. That's what creates a thriving uh, community and that's why I'm here. Very well, uh, that's, that's a good message. But sometimes people get, con they get confused between settlement and integration. And that's where the problem starts in this in our area, mm -hmm. because settlement is different from the integration. Integration is a big component of integrating an individual to the mainstream or the larger community. If you don't have that process, the individual will have a difficult to integrate to the major society. Um, um, to say a little bit of the differences between the settlements and the, the integration here we're talking about, and our communities, especially the immigrant communities here, uh, literally illiterates, <laughs> I may say, and I'm sorry to say that. But uh, with the kind of background that I came with, yeah. it's quite difficult to differentiate between uh, when someone doesn't speak English, when someone can't say what he has, what, what he feels, when someone can't express the kind of difficulty that he has gone through, and then there's no one that he can lean to for support or to ask for directions, then it's, we can say that is pathetic. It's quite difficult. Yeah. It's quite troubling. So what I can tell Scott from this point, and I know it's very much new to the place, and kind of metamorphosis, kind of a change going through, and I will ask 
expect to be kind of like uh, be absorbed into the community. Like if you are trying to integrate, you have to learn and uh, diffuse yourself into the different cultures that uh, Brooks has to offer. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many different people that live here that need your help. And uh, if you can use that knowledge and skills, as you said, you, de you develop so many communities which is needed here, then our community can go forward. I know, and our community does not understand between the integration aspects of what the SPEC does and the settlements that some organizations do. You will see someone is going for a settlement issue, then ending up in an integration office, coming onto SPEC. Someone has got the problems with these uh, legal documents. He ends up going to SPEC, then going to like PCIS. So we need to be open. We need these uh, community organizations to be open to the communities, to come forward, and then uh, read their, 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 uh, what they have to offer, their mission and goals, or what they have to their vision to the community so the community themselves understand what these guys are all about. Unless they do, they do that, then the, these confusions will last forever. And when you talk about newcomers, who is newcomer? The definition of newcomer is not only a, an African, Asian, or European. It's, it's also anybody coming within Canada. If you're moving from Black Creek, you're moving from, it's a newcomer to the society. Not necessarily this person is immigrant background, but they are coming from other places, so they do not know this area. So that's the whole idea. That's why you call them newcomer. But the definition newcomer seems to be new Canadian, which is a total two different, uh, two different things. Yeah, I absolutely agree uh, with what you're saying. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, it's, it, it's really important that, uh, and we can actually look back at, at, at some of the research and studies of what really drives human beings. And human beings are driven when they feel happy and when they feel relevant, when they feel that they are part of something bigger. Uh, when we feel irrelevant, we tend to isolate uh, ourselves. Uh, and um, what, what makes us feel relevant? Well, I know in the case of Mohammed, who has had uh, big responsibilities and, and, and worked with large communities uh, uh, back in Africa in particular, it brings a tremendous amount of skill set uh, into Brooks. Are we tapping into that skill set uh, or are we missing out? And I would su suggest that maybe we're missing out uh, uh, on, on many of the skill sets that, that have arrived in Brooks and yet the opportunities may not be available. Um, I can tell you that with organizations like BCIS and some of the other Im immigrant serving organizations that we are now working together in a way to build um, an operational framework which is like a system, uh, a communications framework so that we have clear in, uh, communication both with, between our associations and, and, and organizations and externally. Uh, as well as a referral type of framework. And these, will, these are currently underway. And uh, this has become critical. And I think Mohammed has really brought this to, uh, you know, you know, to, to the surface that this is a, is a challenge that needs to be addressed. And, and, uh, and we recognize that. And it's great to hear uh, that uh, this is being vocalized. So that when somebody arrives, whether let's say you said they've had 10 years already in Canada, or they've just arrived from a refugee camp, in say Somalia, for example, that the um, that we have to look at these in different different scenarios. Uh, there is a settlement. Uh, so, for instance, somebody arrives. Uh, there's a point of entry, and and we assess right away. It says, oh, you've been here for ten years, and you've got a degree, and. Uh, uh, you know, you might be of African or Asian or, you know, other descent. You might be classified as an immigrant, but yeah. you've been here for 10 years yeah. and your children were born here. Yeah. So uh, are you Canadian uh, or are you an immigrant, <laughs> right? Uh, I would suggest Canadian, yeah. right? In fact, I think everybody that's chosen to be here is yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Um, but there's different services and different needs. So there's an initial point of how we make that assessment. Mm -hmm. Uh, and says, okay, well, we need to work on the settlement side first, and then we move into the integration. Or you've already settled, like you said, then we move right into integration. Like myself, you know, I'm looking to integrate. I come from Alberta, but, you know, I'm still learning the culture in Brooks, 
and you know who you know where to live and you know what I can do here to uh, to make myself feel uh, like I'm part of something. That is part that, of a family. That's, part of a family. That, yeah. that's a good point. The uh, uh, Scott, you, if someone wants to volunteer for a spec, what is the process? Well, uh, we actually have a volunteer uh, portal right on our website. So mm -hmm. if somebody wants to volunteer uh, yeah. with SPEC, and we welcome volunteers. Uh, yeah. uh, SPEC is a well-loved organization within this community, I've come to recognize. Yeah. And, uh, and so we do have a lot of people asking us to volunteer. So we have a, a form. Uh, you can go to our website. You can fill out the form. You can actually just come down to, uh, to our office and uh, uh, talk at the front desk and uh, uh, and say you'd like to, to volunteer and then we'll find an opportunity. And we do have lots of opportunities for volunteering coming up. And my follow-up uh, question is, the, how would someone uh, wants to help uh, the um, SPEC, how would they help? Well, uh, we have a number of ways. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, I know, uh, for instance, uh, Mohammed volunteers a lot. Uh, he helps out families. He might uh, drive somebody to an appointment. Uh, he might help them uh, get to a pharmacy. He might help them get to a grocery store. Uh, he might help them in interpreting some of the forms that they may need uh, done. Uh, so there, these are some of the opportunities for, for, uh, for volunteering. Um, we have, we have events that we have coming up, fundraising events where we'll need volunteers uh, always to help us to get these events off the ground. Uh, we're also reaching out to the community to, and, and asking the community to run events on behalf of SPEC uh, to help raise money so that we can continue to offer the services that, that we do. Okay, so somebody who wants to donate, for example, uh, something they will be able to donate to SPEC or would they have to uh uh, would they be able to donate direct to SPEC? You can, direct, uh, you can donate directly to SPEC. We'll, we take any donations in any form okay. uh, and any amounts at any time. There you uh, go. There yeah, you go. So, so, uh, the viewers can yeah. listen, so there is no complication. And I believe it's a tax. tax uh, uh, I believe it's. Uh, uh, yeah, all, all are, are uh, tax deductible. Tax deductible donations. Uh, we will provide uh, tax uh, donation receipts uh, for uh, for any donations over twenty dollars. Um, and there's many, many different ways you can donate right online uh, as well. Thanks, uh, Scott, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Yeah. Uh, how can we, as as a African uh, Canadian leader, specifically as a Somali uh, leader in the council, how would you encourage the new Canadians? or newcomers, immigrants, um, how you encourage them to engage, for example, volunteering, either SPEC, BCIS, other organizations, for example, or the city in general for other events? How you encourage them? What's the best way to encourage them to get involved? Because they have to take some responsibility. Yeah, yeah thank you. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to community capacity building, it's quite a broad spectrum. It's quite a very big thing. And uh, our community, like the Somali communities here in Brooks, are uh, the, popular, the demography is male, largely men, and then the, who happen to work at JPS full time. It's either an L shift or a B shift. Mm -hmm. And then <coughs> the only accessible time that we can encourage our community, and I'll show you why, how we can encourage them, is during the weekends during the weekends because maybe the person goes to work in the afternoon and then in the morning he goes to class, ESL classes to learn English. Or he's in the air shift or morning shifts at work and then he goes to school in the afternoon for English ESL classes. So the only time he has is weekends and too unfortunate to say most of the times our officers don't work on the weekends. So I will encourage that uh, the community organizations here working here be open to the community in the first place. They open up. They, op they open up themselves to the communities that uh, this is what we do. That they sell what they have. As I said in the first place, the organizations sell themselves to the communities. And then I will, using our structured um, leadership, we have a structured leadership. We have so many community organizations here. We have. Uh, all African community organizations here, the buffet we are talking about. And uh, we can go back to them and then say, we are here. We need to integrate ourselves into the communities. What do we do? 
First, we need to learn the cultures of the people we meet here. How do we do? We have to sell ourselves first. Like I am coming here, Ahmed can take a big role here. He can invite, like uh, your work has to double time, <laughs> double the rate of your work now, and invite so many people, and then ask these questions again and again. What can the immigrant people that came to Brooks do to uh, enhance the living standards of themselves and those people they come to? And uh, what, they, what can we do? We have to brainstorm, we have to have focus group discussions, and then the, we need to know the inner parts of the community that we engage, because there are so many barriers. The language is one, we don't speak. And then the second thing is, uh, we are not uh, educated about the laws of, the kind of, of where we live. We don't know the, the, the bylaws that govern the city itself. A Somali person or an immigrant person may not know uh, where, what am I doing, what's wrong and what's right. So the organizations have to open up themselves using focus group discussions and like uh, service even itself. We can be agents of, uh, Ahmed can do that. We will brainstorm and talk and then discuss how best they can be able to benefit out of his experience and then be part of the general community, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, you know, I, I come from a background originally uh, where I was in uh, the marketing and sales world, uh, where we, you meet the needs of yeah. your, 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 your clients, of, yeah. of your customer base. Uh, it's one thing for us to come and build something that we think our yeah. customers need. Yeah or clients need, it's another thing to find out what our clients need and then build it mm -hmm. after. And Canada has had a, a, you know, a gray history of yeah. building for things that didn't necessarily meet the needs. So we are very much about listening uh, and, and meeting the needs of the community. That's, that's very nice of you. A quick one uh, in, in short time. Uh, what are the advantage of having a diverse population such as the one we have in Brooks in your own opinion? One of, the, one of the unique things, of course, about Brooks, I think that probably within Canada, is that it is a highly diverse community, which brings a tremendous amount of, of cultural influences and experiences that, um, that we can learn from uh, uh, here within Brooks. Uh, uh, there's great uh, traditions, uh, uh, ways of being, ways of raising children that, that may be different than, than has tra tra traditionally been done in Canada, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, with our indigenous population, for example, there's a tremendous amount that non-indigenous people can learn about um, you know, the circles and you know, connection to the land. There's a great that we can learn from African communities mm -hmm. about uh, you know, providing a certain level of, uh, say, freedom or less restricted freedom, perhaps, to our children uh, that we might experience here. So it's very much important for us to be open to being students uh, as much as being supporters and, and teachers. Well, well, well said. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you, what message do you have for, uh, for the uh, viewers in terms of the, uh, the successful uh, election of Somalia? And well, that is something to be proud of. <clears throat> and um, and so, um, Somalia had got uh, elections parliamentary elections, uh, presidential elections, where the president chosen an MB. And uh, unlike uh, being it called a failed state for some time, because of the civil war that wrecked the country for quite a number of uh, 25 years, and uh, of the droughts of the famine, and the recently intoxicated uh, people, I, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid to mention them. And uh, Somalia has come of age, and the, the parliament elected um, an, a, a president anonymously in under one vote. No one said anything about it. And uh, the sitting president, uh, unlike the other African leaders, uh, peacefully transferred the power to the new president, which is, has never happened in Somalia or in, in the neighboring African countries for quite a number, which is something a success story to be relied on. And uh, talking about the new president, the new president was my boss when I was working for a Norwegian refugee council in Kenya. 
He was my regional director, and I was the project, director, project manager. So I, I know he's someone that I, people can rely on him, that uh, someone who is human, who understands, and by the way, he's Norwegian, he's from Norway, and uh, he is a gentleman, and I hope he will be the person to rescue Somalia for, for the better. Okay. So you're talking about the Prime Minister? The Prime Minister, yeah. Okay. And, and also the President? The President, yeah. Okay. No, I think that's, that that will be the end of our uh, program today. We uh, uh, thank both of you, and we hope a um, Somali or other nations in Africa who have a civil war problems to come out of the civil war for the common good of their people and uh, respect the human rights of the individuals. So we will uh, have a lot of uh, Somalis or other African people to go back in Africa, their nations, and help them rebuild the country. Uh, if the continuation of human rights violation is continuous, you can have many elections as much as you want. If there is no accountability, <laughs> you go back the same, the same yeah. issue. So, and that's something common for Africa. So I hope they will learn out of the Western society how the democratic system works. And we hope uh, someday we'll uh, see Africa thrive for the uh, good of their good citizens. But they have to have a good gover governance and good accountability and transparency. If you don't have... Good, good governance is what Somali needs now, and Africa needs. If, if you don't have, you will have a, uh, a continent which is doomed to have a problems for many years to come, and you can blame problems to other people when you can fix your own problem. But thank you very much for coming to the Global Village Show. We are very honored to have uh, Mr. Mohammed. Thank you very much, and Mr. Scott, thank you very much to have you. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, end of Global Village uh, show today, and um, we are airing today from the Brooks Legion, um, uh, Legion Center in Brooks area, and we will continue to air this program, uh, Global Village show, for the next few months. Uh, this is part of the initiative that we hope to put the youth and senior Legion elders education for the, those who sacrifice to the lives of the freedom that we enjoy. Until then, thank you very much for joining us and we hope you will join us next time.